back in their first heavyweight showdown this season, the Suns forced 22 turnovers and took Game 1 from the Warriors. After Golden State grabbed Game 2, they were back on Christmas Day for a rubber match, and it did not disappoint. As you can see, Klay Thompson can hardly contain himself. One key to that first meeting was Phoenix's defensive principles applied to Steph Curry, switching constantly to nullify his movement off of screens and bringing their big men up to meet him outside the three-point line. Mikhail Bridges bothered Curry a bunch in that first game, and he and the Suns held up pretty well against Steph this time around, especially on the ball. But the Warriors had a new counter. They responded to all that switching by just prematurely backcutting away from the ball. Jay Crowder is overplaying this cut off a screen, but Curry uses that against him by going back door for free throws. Later in the first, they're setting up another pair of screens for Steph to fly off, and this time he backdoors McHale, and Bridges catches up to him, but Steph finds a little room for a fadeaway. Here's the same setup from their first game. Curry's 10 feet off the baseline, the Suns are hugged up on the screeners, so they can jump out on Steph's three-pointers, and Draymond's man can sag off him because he's a non-shooter. But on Christmas, Green was up top with a live dribble occupying his defender. That put a shooter on the wing to pull his man out of the lane. The non-shooters still keep their defenders near the line because they want to switch onto Curry, and Steph moved down to the baseline so his man couldn't play behind him. In the third, they ran the same set again. Steph looks like he's headed to use these two screens out high and another back cut frees him up, and it's more free throws. Here's another one where he goes early. Bridges shifts his body to overplay the cut because Phoenix wants to avoid a switch with JaVale McGee. So Curry back doors, and it's a simple bounce pass for two. When Steph gives it to Draymond up high, he'll often turn and pitch it right back to Curry for a cleaner shot. So again, Crowder is worried about this curl off a screen. The Suns probably aren't expecting Green to drive into the paint, and it's another perfect pass from Draymond. His distributing was exceptional this game, firing a perfect extra pass after Curry draws multiple defenders, and Steph wasn't the only warrior cutting early. Gary Payton II catches Chris Paul turning his head, so he basket cuts, and it's a pinpoint delivery from Green, and a nice finish by GP2. Cutting also helps offset a lack of shooting. Curry draws two defenders on this play, and that leaves a single good shooter, Otto Porter Jr., on the weak side for Paul to worry about, so GP2 just cuts past him into open space for yet another layup. On this one, two defenders go to Curry again, he moves it to Kevon Looney, who shoots this time, but Peyton and Porter cut into open space behind CP3, and he can't box out two people at the same time. Speaking of boxing out, you might remember this one, where Curry drives into traffic and kicks it out, but Bridges commits the fatal error of stopping, freeing up a Steph relocation three, and then Booker never blocks out Peyton, and that was a mistake. Big mistake. Big. This cut is related to Curry, with the sun switching onto him quickly, and that opens up the backdoor slip as a counter. And again, that lane is open with only two shooters on the court because one non shooter cuts while another one passes. It's the same thing here, where one non shooter quickly touches it to another, who feathers it into the paint and the Suns might want to consider sagging off of Looney or Draymond, but the reason teams are afraid to drop off these guys is because the Warriors immediately turn them into screeners, and you end up with open shots like this. As it is, the Suns aren't exactly paying a ton of attention to Green, leaving Looney and him alone here, but he knocked down not one, but two three-pointers in this game. And as usual, he was just everywhere, providing his usual help rotations into the paint, finishing with three blocks and three steals, 
including this incredible sequence in the first quarter, where he closes to the corner and deflects a three-point attempt, then starts chugging down the court and transition into two smaller defenders, can't quite finish the layup, but comes back in to steal it and then fire a layup pass falling out of bounds. Holy <laughs> Draymond Jr. approves. Green actually guarded Chris Paul for stretches of this game, and this was Chris's only real win in that matchup, hopping by Looney masterfully and then finishing in the paint with a wild scoop shot. When Draymond wasn't guarding him, Paul had plenty of success, using the old step on the defender's foot trick to open up this big three at the end of the first half, and later on he gave rookie Jonathan Kuminga a little hesitation move off a screen to get downhill for an easy bunny. He also shamelessly gave Kuminga a rip-through move 90 feet from the basket, and I'm going to need someone to explain why on earth this is a basketball move and a defensive foul. Anyway, Paul was able to have some success in the mid-range when other Warriors were guarding him, and he created offense for his teammates, here snaking into the lane to draw help, then skipping it across the court for a hockey assist on an open Bridges 3. I loved this read down the stretch, where two Warriors jump him in the pick and roll, he keeps his eyes on the roll man, which moves Draymond Green into the lane, only to whip it without looking to the top for a Crowder bomb. But Green did have a ton of success on CP3, navigating screens perfectly to prevent any advantage. He slides in front of the first one, then stays at home while Curry shows quickly, and then Paul asks for one more pick, and Draymond wisely goes under because he can still contest a three with that length, and that basically shuts off Paul's options on this play. Since Chris doesn't really have a quickness advantage, Draymond can use that long wingspan to bother his passing angles and make life difficult. And since Paul isn't very active away from the ball, Green can still camp out on the edge of the paint in his normal help position, and here he's able to tip a rebound to a teammate. On this one, Draymond goes with Ayton while Looney hedges out to Paul, and then on the recovery, Paul wants to hit Ayton, but Green reaches over with his right arm to block the pass, and Chris flails it to the corner at the last second, which gives Porter time to close out and recover, which makes the shot just a little bit harder at the hoop. Earlier in the third, Draymond works over the screen, and this time that length just stuffs the pass, and because of runouts like this and all those cuts on offense, the Warriors shot 80% at the rim, the worst mark of the season for the Suns' second-ranked defense. Green also got Booker a few times in this game, and it wasn't Devin's best showing offensively, shooting just 5 for 19 from the floor with two free throws and two assists. After their first meeting, I noted how they had success with their size, and this game was no different, with Aiton finishing 8 for 10 from the floor, with a number of successful post touches and four offensive rebounds in his 30 minutes of action. The Suns generated an excellent 118 offensive rating in this game, but perhaps a larger diet of Aiton is an option they could explore going forward to soften up the Golden State defense. The last fun wrinkle in this game came in the fourth quarter, where Nemanja Bialica wasn't stopping on his screens for Curry, which doesn't let his defender get set, allowing Curry to turn the corner here for a layup. Back in their first meeting, these screens were traditional, allowing this defender to set himself up against Curry's jumper. But ghosting this screen like this, so it's never really set, gives the defender little time to react and strain the Suns' traditional pick and roll defense. Phoenix tried to adjust by trapping the Curry ball screen, but it was a slow recovery from McGee and ended up with an open Porter triple. Uh, spoiler alert. So the Suns decided to play without any big men so they could just switch everything. Bielitsa flips the screen, and with no shot blockers in the lane, Curry takes it to the house. 
things were a little better the next time down the floor where the Suns comfortably switched the pick and roll. But then Curry put Cam Johnson in the way back machine. And despite a 10 for 27 night, he had a big mark on the offense. Moments later, Kerr called timeout to give Steph a rest. And with Aiton back on the floor, he knew Phoenix would drop him on any pick and roll, allowing Porter to walk into an easy three. The Suns cut it to two before Curry came back in, and he misses this little floater, but Looney gives Golden State a second chance, and watch Curry on the reset. They defend his back door well, but he keeps going to the other side. Bridges steps up because he's worried about Curry flying off one of those handoffs, Crowder then falls a bit behind on the switch, and it's yet another clutch jumper from Porter to put them up four. Otto has been excellent off the bench this season, and this one is just all on him with a little step back, and at this point he has it stuck on Automatic, and ices the Suns with this heat check three, and that is all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. May is a long way off and a lot can change between now and then. But if this is indeed a preview of the Western Conference Finals, it's going to be one fun, high quality series, and I can't wait to see what counters would come next. To support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinking basketball. We have additional content there, including some video extras from the Suns and Warriors first meeting this season. Let me know your thoughts on this game and if you think these teams will meet in the playoffs. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this one and that you are having a great day.